Hello, welcome to Health Matters. I'm Sherry Gallant with Alberta Health Services, and we're starting off our show today with <laughs> Stephanie Nguyen. She is a dietetic intern um, working with public health um, here in Lethbridge. And we're in a local grocery store, and we're going to show you some things that you may be aware of, but we might also blow your mind a little bit. We're going to talk about infant and toddler nutrition. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us. So when we're in the grocery store, what foods should parents and caregivers be looking for when they're shopping for infants and toddlers? Well, the best foods to offer your infants and toddlers are the same healthy foods that your family enjoys and eats. So. Um, with the exception of store-bought baby uh, cereals, um, there's no need to uh, purchase pre-designed or purchase uh, pre-packaged designed foods for infants and toddlers. So offer um, the same uh, range of healthy foods that you, from your family meals and um, let them uh, discover uh, different types of textures and um, let them feed themselves. So that means them using their hands and uh, picking up the food and getting messy. And as parents, uh, don't limit yourself to the baby section of the grocery store. Okay. So when you're, when you're doing grocery shopping, um, uh, purchase foods such as vegetables and fruits, whole grain um, products, um, milk and alternatives, and meat and alternatives. So that sounds an awful lot like Canada's food guide. That's correct. So that's what we're going for. We're, we're following Canada's food guide for our little tiny ones, just as we would for ourselves and, mm -hmm. and our older children. Yep. Yep. And with some texture modifications uh, from your family meals, you can cater to your babies. So do, do you um, adjust the texture according to how many teeth they have? Um, yes, that's right. Um, so for babies, you want to uh, slowly or gradually uh, change the texture as they grow and uh, and as they develop their eating skills. Once they're able to chew more. Yeah, so like maybe you first start with uh, smooth and uh, mashed foods and then change the texture to more like mince and soft uh, cut up uh, foods. Okay, well, so we've started off in the baby food section here, but as you've just said, we don't have to do all of our shopping for the little ones here. We're gonna go and look around, stay with us. We're going to show you some things around the store um, that you may not know. You can go to all these different areas to shop for your baby and your toddler. Stay with us. Welcome back, thanks for staying with us. Now we've changed locations in our local grocery store. We're talking about infant and toddler nutrition. I'm with dietetic intern Stephanie Nguyen, um, who's working at Public Health. And we were talking about how you don't need to limit yourself in terms of thinking of baby food when you're feeding the little ones. You can think in terms of what the family's eating. Mm -hmm. When we talk about nutrition though, as they're growing, is there a single nutrition that stands out to you in terms of importance? So young children need iron for growth and development. So uh, when your baby's around six months old, uh, offer them uh, foods that are rich in iron and continue to offer those types of foods to, throughout childhood. So when you're at the grocery store, uh, foods that are rich, are I rich in iron, for example, would be your store-bought uh, baby cereals, with our, which are high in iron. And also uh, another option is fatty fish that is low in mercury and without the bones. For example, salmon and mackerel could be offered to your children uh, at least two times a week uh, during meals and um, lastly is uh, meat and alternatives so for example meat such as your chicken and your pork and your beef and also your meat alternatives so for example your black beans your lentils your chickpeas uh, smooth nut butters eggs and tofu so um, during meal times you can uh, mash those uh, tofu up and offer it to your children or cut up some hard boiled eggs is also a great option. So, and then also uh, for uh, dried um, cooked lentils or uh, canned beans, they're great easy uh, finger foods for your children. And what about canned fish? Canned fish is also a great option. Just uh, remove the bones. So for example, um, we can. just happen to have some right here. Yeah, so canned salmon without the bones is a great option for your children. Okay, that's a good fatty fish, which has all the healthy fats. Mm -hmm, healthy fats for a healthy brain. Okay, and like you mentioned, nut butters and uh, 
and tofu and beans and all those things yeah. that have lots of protein. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay, thanks for this visit at the meat counter. Now we're gonna move on to dairy. Okay, we've moved on and we're in the dairy section now. And uh, Stephanie is gonna tell us some more about milk and milk alternatives. We've talked about meat and meat alternatives. So what, um, what milk products do you suggest for, for children? So babies need fat. So offer uh, full fat versions of milk products such as uh, milk, I mean, sorry, such as uh, cheese and plain full fat yogurt. Plain. Yeah. Can you put fruit in it? For sure. So uh, to sweeten it up as a snack, you can add uh, fruits. I would suggest maybe some mashed potato, uh, mashed bananas into the yogurt. I think they'd protest if we gave them mashed potato yogurt. Yeah, that would taste very <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. So also. Um, if uh, you're interested in offering cow's milk to your baby, wait till they're around 9 to 12 months old okay. and offer them uh, a whole uh, milk or also known as homogenized milk. So the, the extra fat gives them the nutrients they need while they're growing? Yeah, well, it's uh, so fat is very good for brain development. So we, that's why we suggest offering uh, full fat until they're two, around two years old. Okay, so you've got something, you've got a bunch of stuff there. You've got some nice cheese and some yogurt and then kefir. Yes, kefir is a type of yogurt that you can offer to your babies. Fermented products are good for the tummy, right? Yeah, they have probiotics that's good for your gut health. Okay. All right, we're going to move on now to, where are we going to go? Uh, next, let's visit the vegetables and fruits. Okay, we're off to the vegetables and fruits. Welcome back. We are now in the produce section and looking at this beautiful array of colorful, gorgeous fruit behind us, it's kind of hard to imagine that some children actually don't like fruit. I, I don't understand it, but yeah. it's true, isn't it? It's very true. So how can, what are some tips that parents, we can give to parents to get their little ones to start eating fruits and vegetables too? So to encourage your children to eat more vegetables and fruits, take them to the grocery store and allow them to select a new vegetable or fruit to try for that week. And also, as adults, we can be more adventurous eaters. So try to be a role model and uh, try a new produce yourself. Uh, children learn by copying others, so they're more likely to try that new vegetable or fruit. So uh, in, for when you're writing out your grocery list, uh, try to include uh, different varieties. So not just the fresh fruits and vegetables, but you can also include canned or um, frozen uh, varieties. So uh, for example, uh, they're very nutritious and also they're very handy for a quick and uh, simple meal. Mm -hmm. And frozen and canned vegetables are kind of preserved at the peak of their freshness. So some people might, might, might not think they're ideal, but they're quite fine. Yeah, they're very nutritious and you're right, they're, they're, they are picked to the peak of freshness. So, and then they're also uh, very, uh, they're also inexpensive compared to their fresh variety. And unlimited shelf life. <laughs> That's right. They're not going to go bad on you. Well, not for a few months in the freezer, for sure. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> we, we have stashed a couple of things behind us here. We have... Um, yeah, so for um, canned fruits, you want to look for varieties that are in water or in the fruit juice. And for canned vegetables like the sweet potato, this is a great option because it's soft and it's already cut up, but try to pick ones that are not in sodium or in salt. Ah, okay. What else have we got here? We've got pe pear slices. Pear slices and, and also green beans. Green beans are a great option. And are the, I imagine the vegetables are always packed in water? Uh, usually they're packed in water, but sometimes they're added with salt. So the sodium. The sodium. So babies and toddlers don't need the sodium. So uh, it's better to pick ones that are not added with salt. Okay, thank you. We have one more stop to make and we'll see you over in grains and breads. Well, Stephanie and I are now in the cereal aisle and um, we're going to talk to you about cereals and grains and, and then a little lesson on reading labels. Um, when parents and caregivers are looking for grain products because they're keeping in mind Canada's food guide, mm -hmm. 
what should they be looking for when they're feeding little ones? So they should be choosing whole grain products. So make at least half of your uh, grain products for your children whole grains. So um, there's a lot of, so when looking for a package, you want to uh, look for uh, ones that says whole on the package. For example, um, this 100% whole uh, wheat bread. And also check the ingredients list. If it says whole grain near the beginning of the list, it is a good, uh, good healthy whole grain product. However, there's are, there are many uh, packages and products that are not whole grain. For example, um, for example, you think that 12 grain would be a whole grain product, but if you check the ingredient list, the first uh, ingredient is uh, enriched wheat flour, which is not a whole grain product. So just to be aware of that. So we, we don't want to cast shadows on any particular products, but I guess reading the label makes you the wise consumer because the products have whole grains in them, but they may not be a majority of whole grains. Yes, that's right. That's right. So knowing that the, the first item in the label is the most... Um, the largest uh, uh, portion of the food product. Right. Good information. So here we are. We've talked, we've led in a little bit about labels. So tell us what we need to know to be really smart about reading labels when we're shopping for our families. Okay. So it's very important to read labels because it can help you make healthier food choices for yourself, but also for your children. So uh, when look at the food uh, labels, you want to look for uh, two spots, the ingredient list and the nutrition facts table. So the ingredients list tells you about what is the what ingredients is in the food and is by weight. So usually the ingredients that are near the list, I mean near the top of the list, are the biggest uh, portions of that food. And so you want to choose uh, products that says the word whole grain. And also you want to avoid products that uh, has uh, salt, sugar, or sodium uh, in the first three ingredients. So, and then it's kind of tricky for sugar because sugar has a lot of names. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there, so sugar are naturally presented or could be added it during food production. So those are called added sugars and their different names could be uh, sucrose, uh, glucose, fructose, uh, dextrin, um, corn syrup, uh, high fructose corn syrup. And so you wanna avoid those types of products. So uh, secondly, okay, so when you're looking at the nutrition facts tables, it tells you information on the serving size, um, the calories, and the uh, core nutrients that's in the product, such as uh, calcium, iron, and vitamin A. So when you're reading the nutrition facts table, look at the top first. That will tell you about their serving um, size. And um, in the table, the, the nutrients are based on that serving size. So if your uh, children eat more or less of their serving size, you need to adjust for the uh, nutrient content. Mm -hmm. This is such great information. I, the, the label reading is so important. I know that um, the serving size is so crucial. I didn't know that for a long time. You can put two boxes of cereal side by side and look at the labels and they appear to be vastly different. Mm -hmm. Different, but what the difference is is the serving size. One might be a cup, one might be half a cup. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. Yeah, so you really have to pay attention. Yeah, so yeah, let's try to uh, look let, at example. Yeah, let, we have an example here in your hand. Okay. Let's let's just kind of so, go over it. Yeah, so I have a, a store-bought baby cereal that we can look at. So first, uh, when you're trying to read the nutrition facts uh, table, you want to look at the serving size. So for this product, we have one third cup or 28 grams of this baby cereal. So then we want to check the percent daily value for the nutrients, um, which are here. And we want to see if certain nutrient has a little or a lot. So what I mean when it's a little, it means if it's a less than 5% um, percent daily value of a certain nutrient, that means a little. And when it's 15% or more daily value, it means that there's a lot. So we want to look for nutrients like um, iron. So 
Iron is very important that we discussed before. So we want a lot of the iron. So in this example, it has 70% daily buyer, uh, 70 percent daily value of iron, which is great. I know you've mentioned sugar is very important with little ones, so look for something that has no added sugar? Yeah, that's right. You want to look for something that has uh, no added sugar, and also you want to look for um, some a product that has uh, low in sodium. So as I mentioned about the 5% daily value, you want to uh, pick a product that has less than 75 milligrams of sodium, which this product has. Uh, it has uh, two milligrams, two milligrams, which is um, a good choice. And uh, so you want to pick some, you want to pick products that are high in fiber and vitamins and such and iron and calcium, but also low in sugar and sodium. I noticed with this particular product, it's a whole grain baby cereal, it says on there, and um, also like 120% of vitamin B1, which is excellent, more than the daily. If they don't eat anything else with vitamin B, they're going to get it in this product. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You've given us just a ton of valuable information. Stephanie, is there anything that you wanted to add? Yes. So when... Uh, well, as a parent or a caregiver, when you're shopping for your toddlers or infants, uh, look for a variety to introduce to your kids, but also look for uh, food products that are high in um, fiber and low in sodium and sugar. And yeah. Shop the rainbow, eat the rainbow. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for being with us and giving us all this great information. Thank you for having me.